Good afternoon friends, magandang hapon po mga kaibigan uh, This is our next episode for our uh, instructional for beginners using Kali for exercise Okay, so uh, let me declare my disclaimer Okay, I'm not a master, I'm not a grandmaster, I'm not an instructor for any martial arts Okay, I'm here, I know how to I know some moves of the Kali, but I'm not an expert. Okay, now, I just modify this because I use the Kali as a form of exercise, me being a senior. Okay, I hope that explains everything. Okay, so I have given you some techniques on how to begin, okay, how to start using Kali as a form of exercise. And that's why I call this Kali's Tenics, okay, calisthenics, Kali meaning the art, which is a martial art. Calisthenics, okay, if you see the dictionary for the word calisthenics, it means that a physical activity that intends to develop strength, okay, endurance, and grace. So there are three things that our objective in Kali's Tenics. We use the Kali to be able to develop strength, to be able to develop endurance, and to develop our grace. So it will be grace. Okay, so I've given you some techniques there. Uh, I hope you remember that the first one is the basic moves. In basic moves, one thing uh, to consider is the concept of how we move the stick. It will be move, moving a continuous and rounded motion. It doesn't end the continue, continuity of the motion, the fluidity of the motion, making it rounded. Second is that our weight should go and be shifted according to where the direction of the Kali stick. So we move our weight according to where the direction of the Kali. Okay? That's where it goes. Okay, the third one is that we use a triangular form of footwork. Okay, we may move forward, backward, okay, we may move sideways. As long as we maintain a three point where we move our feet and where we stand, okay. A triangular points to consider when you move whether forward, sideward, or backward. Okay, then we have our uh, our uh, awareness of the direction of the side of the stick because it's actually simulated, it simulates a sharp instrument, okay? A sword, a bolo, or a knife. So the sharp edge is the outer edge away from the person, away from you, okay? And when we see one of the movements, or the basic movements, we have to note that the sharp edge will be the one moving forward in the cutting edge, okay? Wherever the condition, wherever the direction is, we have to move the stick facing the front, or the cutting edge should be the one moving forward. Okay? Now, take note that there's another way of how we use the stick. Okay? First, I want you to be aware that if we think of this as a ball or a sharp instrument, the movement, if you take a look at your arms, okay? The movement, if you move it from right to left, your palm side, the side palm side of your hand is towards, is moving to the left as well. And it's mostly up. Okay, that's the supine position, okay? And if you move to the right, the knuckle side of your hand will be on top or on, on, the, on the direction where you're going, okay? That's how you do it. But there's another move which is more commonly used, especially when you use a stick. Because it uses the movement of the wrist. 
and of course the movement of the arm the forearm okay if you see you can move it this way so it it's it shift there's a shift so which makes that the, the, the side of the knuckles the side of the knuckles the dorsal side is towards the direction okay and it goes to the other side as well and you'll see that the the palm side will be towards direction and that's the basis on how we use the swirling okay the swirling figure of eight which is commonly seen with the Kali users okay and it's very versatile because it gives a more stronger hit and we can swirl it we can turn it around and so you'll see that it is the basis of most of the Kali moves that we see on YouTube and any other dojo for any martial arts, okay? And that's the basis on how they swirl it. We usually use a technique, we swirl it either to f make a fake or to increase the momentum. Okay, when we use this, okay, we may swirl it to, to fake, not to fake. We may swirl it to fake or more importantly to increase the momentum of the force. You see the movement. See, we fake. See? So that's how we do it okay how do we do it okay so it's the same thing the lateral movement change see you, you shift your wrist turn it and crosses okay when you hit horizontally you when you cross your body at midline you shift it's same thing going down okay going down it's the same thing going up okay okay so there you are there are two basic ways of how you think uh, how you handle the motion of heating it's either as a knife or as a sharp sword where you think of it doesn't shift okay when you use a wallow it should be like this but when you use the stick it's different okay and here you can turn it as well by the way using the old method you can still swirl it okay and but it's different it moves see when you hit for example this one and you return back you can swirl it but then again it the swirling comes the circular motion comes from from the shoulder okay it comes from the shoulder it comes from a higher a longer reach so if this is a bolo or a sharp instrument you can swirl it using the arm while when this is a stick we swirl it from the from the elbow from the forearm not from the wrist as many you will see that they are some will be doing some fancy move okay swirling it like this but you cannot swirl it just like that if you move it from the wrist because the wrist by not nature doesn't move a lot doesn't move full motion okay so what you have to do is to use your and try to swirl it that way i i do not recommend it maybe if you're an expert yes you may but i don't okay uh, okay so the movement is from the forearm and a little movement of the wrist 
So it's like this. This one, this one is the move, okay? And if you're using a bolo, the, the circular motion is from the shoulder. Then you shift. It's from the shoulder. But this one, if you use this, it's from the wrist and the forearm. Okay? Okay? The wrist and the forearm. Okay? Uh, other experts may recommend swirling this way. That's too complicated for you. Okay? That's too complicated for me as well. And it's too fancy. Too fancy. You cannot... You cannot use that just like that. And you, you sacrifice. You sacrifice the grip. Well, some people, some proponents may be very well versed at this. It's okay. But I would recommend you holding the grip as, as strong as you can. Okay? So, the movement is from the wrist. From the wrist. And the forearm. Okay? From the forearm and the wrist. Okay, and when you swirl it, it's still the forearm and the wrist. Okay, it is forearm and the wrist is much bigger. Okay, so you can turn it as much as you can, turn it as much as you can, because there's no, there's no pain. Okay, unlike if you force yourself to be doing this with your wrist alone, well. I don't recommend that kind of swirling, okay? So now you have two ways. If it's a knife or if, if you prefer it even if you are using a stick to have that movement, okay? Coming from the shoulders, okay? Or the movement of the stick. Okay, the movement is like this. Okay, so, yeah, I hope that uh, answers some of your, some of your uh, questions about how, how to swear the stick. Okay? So, I don't recommend this kind of swirling with the wrist alone, okay? I recommend it using the forearm and the wrist bigger turns okay uh, that's about it for now thank you very much i hope you learned something out of my my uh, tutorial